Just keep in mind, they failed to cover in seven out of their last nine. They're also just one and four against the spread in their last five on the road. This Penn State offense has been anemic this year. They're scoring just 64 points per contest when traveling. They're also a winless 0-4 against the spread as the official road underdog. Now, scoring-wise, Penn State's just 18% to the over when the line was between 132 and 145. So I know that's a big gap there, but that's a trend that certainly uh, jumped off the page to me. Meanwhile, on the other side, this Nebraska defense is allowing just 52 points per contest on their home court. So with all that said and done, I'm going to lay the points. Give me Nebraska minus 10 and the under 136 and a half in that one. <clears throat> Next game, UCLA, Oregon. 9 o'clock tip-off at Oregon. The Ducks open 4.5 with a total at 139 and a hook. And since those markets open this one up, we're seeing a steady and consistent fade of Oregon in the early going here. We're also seeing steady and consistent money toward the over we've actually seen it looks like a six and a half point move upward on the total so right now oregon's minus three and a half with the total moving all the way up to 146 so once again the ducks open four and a half down to three and a half total open 139 and a half all the way up to 146 54 percent are leaning ucla 84 percent shaded toward the over and at the moment the bruins are plus 150 for some money line cash now, if you like the Bruins in a road upset here, just keep in mind they failed to cover in five out of their last seven. They're also just six and nine against the spread overall for the year. This UCLA offense is putting up just 65 points per contest on the road, and they're officially 0-4 against the spread when catching the points. Now, on the scoring side of things, Oregon is 6-2 and to the under in their last eight, 3-0 and to the under in their games at home, taking on teams allowing more than 72 points per contest. So with all that said and done, I'm going to purchase the half a point, slide it down, and take Oregon minus three and the under 146 in that one. All right, next and final game for our college slate, it is going to be UOP at Gonzaga, 11 o'clock tip off at Gonzaga. The Bulldogs open 24 and a half with a total at 158. And since those markets opened this one up, that big number didn't slow down the public betters. That number moved upward. We're now looking at 25 and a half. When it comes to Gonzaga, with the total moving upward to 158 and a hook. So once again, the Bulldogs open 24 and a half up to minus 25 and a half. Total open 158 up to 158 and a hook. 70% are leaning Gonzaga, 53% shaded toward the over. And at the moment, Pacific is plus 7,000 for some money line cash. Now, if you like UOP to get the job done in this one, they are scoring 73 points per contest on the offensive side of things. They've successfully covered the number in two out of the last three. And my biggest concern about Gonzaga is, well, the caliber of play within the past couple of weeks. Gonzaga's last four wins came against Santa Clara, Cal State, Bakersfield, Northern Alabama, Denver, and Texas Arlington. So, I don't know. Really haven't been challenged. Not that UOP is going to be a big challenge, but 25 and a half points is a lot of points to lay there. Now, when it comes to the scoring... Gonzaga is just 4-6 and six to the over in their games at home. UOP is just 2-4 to the over when the line was more than 145. So with all that said and done, I will purchase the half a point. I always do that. I, I've lost way too many games by a measly half point. I'll pay the extra juice. I don't care. I'll take Pacific plus 26 after buying the half a point and the under 158 and a half in that one. All right, we're going to slide into our NHL slate. Let's go ahead and take a look. And we're going to start off with Toronto at New Jersey. 7 o'clock puck drop in Newark. The Maple Leafs open the betting as the $1.60 favorite with a total at 6. And since those markets opened this one up, not a whole lot of movement on the total. Although we did see really significant movement when it comes to the money line. And it's actually a $0.40 cent move. Toronto's now minus $2. So once again, Toronto opened 160 up to 200 Total open remains at six, and at the moment, New Jersey is plus 150 for some money line cash at home. Now, if you like Toronto in this one, uh, just keep in mind, they failed to cover in four out of their last six puck line plays. Now, New Jersey, well, they've successfully covered the puck line in six out of their last seven. New Jersey is also 11-4-4 four and four straight up on their home ice. And when it comes to the scoring, Toronto scoring four goals per contest on the road. 
So I think we should have some scoring in this one, but I think New Jersey can keep it uh, within a goal. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Jersey Devils plus one and a half, getting the job done for some puck line cash in the over six goals in that one. Next game, Washington, Boston, seven o'clock puck drop in Beantown. The Bruins open the betting as the $1.30 favorite with the total at six. And since those markets opened this one up, not a whole lot of movement on the total. Although we did see a nickel move toward Boston. Right now, they're minus 135. So once again, the Bruins open minus 130, up to minus 135. Total open remains at six. 60% are leaning Boston, 76% shaded toward the over. Washington's plus 120 for some money line cash. Boston plus 180, laying the goal and a half. Now, if you like Boston in this one, they are 5-0 straight up in their last five, 8-2 straight up in their last 10. This Boston team ranks uh, ranks second in defensive points allowed, uh, goals allowed. They're also winning 76% of their games on their home ice. Meanwhile, on the Washington side of things, they're 67% to the over, taking on teams allowing less than 2.6 goals per contest. So with all that said and done, I'm going to make the chalky play in this one. Give me Boston minus 135 in the over six goals in that one. Next game, Nashville at CBJ, 7 o'clock pug drop in Columbus. The Blue Jackets open 130, total five and a half. And since this one opened up, we're seeing uh, movement on both the spread. Uh, let's try that again. Since this one opened up, we're seeing movement on both the money line and the total. Right now, CBJ, nickel fade. They're down to minus 125. Total moved up to six. So once again, CBJ open 130, down to a buck and a quarter. Total open five and a half, up to six. Nashville's plus 105 for an outright win. CBJ's plus 210, laying the goal and a half. Now, if you like Columbus at home here, just keep in mind they're going up against a Nashville team who's five and one straight up in their last six. They're also four and one straight up in their last five on the road. Columbus on their side of things, well, they rank 23rd in defensive points allowed at home. Uh, defensive goals allowed at home. Columbus is also winning just 42% of their games, taking on teams allowing less than 2.6 goals per contest. Now, when it comes to the scoring, Nashville is 67% to the over when Soros makes the start. Now, that is the projected starter this morning. I just want to make something clear. So in the NHL, things change real, real quickly. The NHL has been notoriously uh, bad about releasing information when it comes to injuries, when it comes to starting goalies, when it comes to scratches before the game. They don't, they're not very transparent. So I know a lot of people get on me when uh, the goalie changes. All right. Right now at this moment, the projected starter is Soros for the Preds. Could that change before puck drop? Yes, it could. And if it does, then maybe this information is null and void. But things change in the NHL, so get a clue. Get it right. Right now, Soros is the projected starter in that for Nashville. So with all that said and done, I'm going to take Nashville plus 105, catching the plus money on the road, and the over six goals in that one. All right, next and final game for the show. Where did I put my thing? I normally don't lose my cool like that, but sometimes i got to set you straight. All right, next and final game for the show. It is going to be San Jose at the... Vegas Golden Knights, 10 o'clock puck drop in Vegas. Golden Knights open a buck 20 with a total at six. And since those markets open this one up, we're seeing a nickel move toward Vegas in the early going here. Right now, they're a buck and a quarter. So once again, Vegas open 120 up to a buck and a quarter. Total open and remains at six. 51% are leaning San Jose, 66% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Sharks are plus 105 for some money line cash. Vegas plus 215 for some puck line cash. Now, if you like Vegas in this one, uh, pretty good team to tail right now. They're red hot as they've won their last seven straight. They've also covered uh, four out of their last six puck lines. Now, this Vegas defense ranks first in defense of goals allowed at home. And amazingly, this Golden Knights team is winning 78% of their games played at the current market price. Now, when it comes to the scoring, San Jose's 5-1 and one of the over in their last six. They're also 75% to the over, taking on teams allowing 2.6 to 2.9 goals per contest. They're also 75% to the over, taking on teams over 550. So with all that said and done, I'm going to lay the goal in the half with the Golden Knights. 
Give me Vegas minus one and a half for plus 215 in the over. Six goals in that one.